Let's go over to the uh, x86, well, from the 8086 all the way pretty much onward to the processor, Intel processors and AMD processors we have today. Well, let's go over to the programming models. Uh, we're not going to go too far beyond the 486 because uh, some of the other things uh, we don't need to worry about at this point. And in fact, some of these other things down here we don't need to worry about right now either. But that's beside the point. Uh, let's, oops, let's first... Uh, Go over our colors here. We have blue general registers. We have uh, orange segment registers, purple pointer registers, pink index registers, and green are status control registers. Okay. So over here uh, on the 8086, 8088, 8186, 8188, uh, we have four general purpose registers, and they're 16 bits each. And all of those general purpose registers are split into in half uh, to give us a total of eight uh, byte size registers. Okay? Uh, the four 16 bit registers are known as AX, BX, CX, and DX. And the eight bit registers within those are as AL, AH, BL, BH, and so on, all the way through DL, DH. Okay? These are general purpose, like I said, they can be used uh, to do mostly anything. Uh, there are some instructions that, uh, such as multiply and divide, uh, that will only let you use, uh, I believe it's AX and DX, I believe, for those. Uh, but most of the instructions on the 8086, uh, you can use these general purpose registers any way you see fit, uh, generally. So, now let's move down here to uh, some registers that have special purposes. Uh, we find a segment register that called the CS register. It's the code segment register. Uh, this will be the segment from where our uh, processor is executing its code, or program, I should say. Um, the IP is the instruction pointer register. Uh, this is the offset within this segment uh, that the processor is executing the code. The data segment is just a place where we can put data. It's a segment where we can put data. That's where this will point to the segment that we're using. Uh, this is the source index register. This is the uh, just an index register uh, to an address, an offset, I should say, within the DS within that data segment we're using. Uh, the ES is ES and a DI. It's the extra segment and destination index. Uh, this register pair is similar to this, uh, except it's often used to uh, place things into, whereas this one is used to get things out of uh, both memory locations, obviously. Uh, stack segment is where the segment which we'll put our stack into. The stack pointer is the place that we're pushing and popping data into, uh, or our stack, the address our stack operations are taking place at, the offset, I should say. Uh, the base pointer is uh, similar to the stack pointer, except, or it's not similar. It's, uh, we can use it uh, to implement some uh, um, functions that allow us to uh, examine values within the stack, uh, which we'll get into later. Uh, but we often, what we'll often find is that we will move the stack pointer into the base pointer uh, so that we can access values on the stack without actually interfering, without actually changing the stack pointer, which can be important. Now we have a flags register down here. This is our status control register, the only one that we have in the uh, 8086. Okay? This contains our arithmetic and flags, as well as system control flags and status flags. All right. um, so that's basically the uh, 8086 through the 8186. Uh, we have, with the 286, we have these, these uh, three registers were introduced down here. They're not directly accessible uh, by the programmer. Uh, you actually have to use special instructions to load and store them. Uh, we have the interrupt descriptor table register. It's a nice long name that we all like. Uh, this just, just points a pointer. Just, just know that it's a pointer, okay, to a place in memory that the interrupt descriptor table is uh, located at. We don't need to know what the interrupt descriptor table is yet, but just know that this is a pointer register. It points to somewhere in memory. The same thing with the GDTR, the so global, global descriptor table register. It, uh, it points 
like the IDTR to a place in memory where the global descriptor table is stored. And the same thing with the LDTR, so local descriptor table register. And again, it points to a place in memory where the local descriptor table is stored. Now each of these three registers is 40 bits wide. Uh, you can only see as the programmer, uh, I think 16 of them, I believe. And that's only through the index register here. Uh, so, or uh, not the index, the segment registers, I'm sorry. So, just know that exists uh, for now, and that it's, those are pointers, okay? Point, they point to places in memory, okay? Uh, the 386 mirrors, or it is similar to these other processors over here, the 8086 or the uh, 8286, uh, in the fact that it has four general purpose registers that are some bits wide. In this case, they're 32 bits wide. Uh, they're called EAX, EBX, ECX, and EDX. The E stands for extended because they're 32 bits, vice uh, 16 bits. However, we can still use these registers as 16 bit registers or as two 8 bit registers. So you still got basically what they've done is they've taken this and they've squeezed it into this area here, okay? within that 32-bit area, all right? 32-bit wide area, okay? So we still have these segment registers, and they're still 16 bits wide, um, which might seem kind of strange on a 32-bit processor, but once we figure out what they're actually doing with a 32-bit processor, we'll go, oh, that's why they're like that. Okay, that makes sense. Um, we also got an additional two segment registers here called the FS and GS. They're just additional segment registers. There's no no, nothing special with them. Um, we've got a 32-bit instruction pointer here. Uh, our source and destination index registers, however, have been extended to 32 bits, ESI and EDI, um, but we can still use them as 16-bit registers. Our stack pointer and base pointer have also been extended to 32 bits, but we can still use them as 16 bits. We have a flags register, which is called the E-flags, but you have some extra flags in here, it's extended flags. Uh, now we have these, this list of registers down here, uh, which just know that they exist. We're not going to deal with them right now, uh, with the exception of one bit, with, with, the, with the exception of a bit in, a, uh, in the CR0, I believe is where it's at. Um, so, these are control registers, they perform various system control status functions. Uh, these DR registers down here, there's seven. Well, there's uh, four of these control registers, there's seven of these DR registers, which are debug registers. Uh, we won't be messing with those, just know that they do exist. Um, and as with these processors over here, uh, we also have interrupt, dis interrupt descriptor table, global descriptor table, and local descriptor table within the 8386, 8486, and newer processors. All right. Now, as I alluded to earlier with uh, this, these uh, register pairs, the CSIP, the DSSI, and ESDI, and uh, SSSP, as I alluded to with all of those, uh, when we use instructions such as push, uh, we have implicit register pairings. For example, uh, a push instruction or a pop instruction implicitly, since we're, that's a stack operation, there is an implicit pairing here between the stack segment and the stack pointer. Okay, they're used together. To remember, we're, we have uh, these actually form. Uh, well, let's go do it over here. These pairings form a 32-bit uh, virtual address um, within the processor, which might sound kind of strange on something as old as the 8086, but it actually didn't have 32 bits of memory uh, addressing capability. It only had 20. Uh, there were some tricks in there that they use to, to, to convert that 32 bits of virtual address into a 20-bit you know, physical address. Uh, but be aware that when you use instructions, um, there's implicit register pairings, and some of those you can override. Uh, the ones you can override are the DSES. Uh, DS is normally paired with the source index, and ES is normally paired with the destination ind index. Now you can uh, alter that by using some prefixes that will, it's called segment overriding uh, with these two uh, 
the, with the SI and DI. Uh, but you can't do that, if I remember correctly, you can't do it with the, S, the code segment, that's just a given. And if I remember correctly, you cannot do it with the stack segment, but I could, I mean, I'm sorry, stack pointer, uh, but I could be wrong with that. Um, I'd have to look at the, the, the manual for that, okay? So, this is going to form the basis of what we're working with uh, when we write our programs. Um, and as we get into more complex programs, we'll move further away from the 8086 uh, past the 386, 486, into the Pentium and into newer processors. So, that's it for this.